Hi guys, Giles here, and today I want to do a tutorial. And I want to do a tutorial about NumPy. If you want to do data science or machine learning, you're going to need to know NumPy, numerical Python. It's one of the most useful libraries in Python, especially if you're crunching numbers. Why is it so good? Because it's fast. It can crunch numbers much, much faster faster than say using a python list or python loops and it's got so many built-in functions we're going to do numpy in five minutes let's get five minutes on the screen come over here let's look at the computer and let's get started we will be doing this tutorial in Jupyter Notebooks. I would highly recommend Jupyter Notebooks if you don't have it installed and you want to know how to do that. I've made a video about that, but otherwise, let's just get on with it. We're going to be doing Python 3. Uh, and to begin with, we need to import NumPy as MP. I mean, actually, to begin with, we need to install NumPy. If you haven't done that, you can do that using a pip install. Um, and it comes with Anaconda anyway, which I would definitely recommend. So we import NumPy as NP. It is always imported as NP. And to begin with, I'm going to show you how to create NumPy arrays. And NumPy arrays are really important. So there are several ways, and we're going to look at a few of them. The first way is using this MP.zeros. You can do that, and you will end up with something like this. Um, so it creates a NumPy array populated with zeros. Uh, those zeros are actually floats. So if we have a look at, uh, well, first of all, if we have a look at the type of what we get here, we get a NumPy array. And if we have a look at the type of the uh, integer, or, or the, rather the number inside the array, we see that it is a float. Um, so uh, just bear that in mind when you when you create a NumPy array this way, you get floats inside the array. We need to do this faster. Um, so we can create different sizes of arrays, and this is an example of creating a slightly bigger array populated with zeros. We can look at the shape of that array, but we might want to change that shape. If we do, we can change that shape to 10 by 1, um, which may well be a more useful shape. And that's something to remember when you're using NumPy arrays. You might need to change the shape. In fact, you often need to change the shape. You can also create a NumPy array populated with ones, uh, and you can see that we've got uh, floats there as well and just to prove that if we look at the type of um, Z uh, in there of the numbers inside the array we can see that we get a float. A slightly less common way of creating an array is this np.empty and this creates an empty array for us to fill. Keep moving, keep going, Ah, it's not fast enough. Then there's the linspace way of creating an array. And what that does, it creates a range um, with a starting point, an end point, and then the number of elements that you want. This is very good uh, a lot of the time if you're making plots or you want to create an x-axis for a graph. I mean, there are lots of other uses as well, but that's just one example that uh, I think you might encounter. And here we've now created an array. As you can see, it's got five elements, which is what we've specified. It starts at two and goes up to 10. And again, these numbers inside this array uh, are floats. Uh, and that's just something to bear in mind. I'm taking too long. And the final way I'm going to show you of creating an array in NumPy is this np.array. And that will create one where you put a list inside these brackets. In fact, you can also put the name of a list inside these brackets. Uh, and that will also create an array. And just to check that we have a NumPy array, we look at the type there, and it's a NumPy array. Here is a two-dimensional array created from a two-dimensional Python list. Uh, and you can see how that works there. We can look at the shape of this array. And I want to show you a couple of tips on Jupyter Notebooks. If you're looking for a particular function that you can apply to this array, if you type the name of the array and then a dot and then the tab key, um, all of the available functions will come up for you. Another useful thing is in Jupyter Notebooks, if you type question mark and then the name of the array, you will get um, the doc string about you know what it is that you've got here. This is a NumPy array. It will give you the attributes and the parameters that you can apply to it. Uh, and that is really useful. You can also narrow this down. So for example, if you were to do question mark Z dot and then shape, you just get the bit that was relevant to the parameter shape. Uh, so just bear that in mind. That's quite useful. Faster. Now you can create random arrays using the random.randint 
uh, method in NumPy and we've just seeded it here. So if I were to do that with this, I would get a random array. And I just want to show you how you can access elements of an array. Uh, you've seen this one before. Um, Z1 is the name of the array and then in square brackets 0. This will give us the first element of the array which is 5. Uh, we can get a range by doing 0 colon 2 and that gives us an array of that range there. And if we want to get the last element of the array we can use minus 1. And all of that's really similar to Python lists. So if you're familiar with Python lists this won't seem too odd. We're getting there, we're getting there. The time's ticking, I know that. It's not going to be five minutes, all right? It's not going to be five minutes. It's going to be longer. What I want to do now is use a photo to show you other ways that you can slice up a NumPy array because I think the visual element is really helpful. So I've got this photo of York Minster and I am just reading that in now as a NumPy array. And just to show you here, type of photo is a NumPy array. Let's find out a little bit more about that photo. What's its shape? Well, it's 324 rows by 574 columns and then it's a color image so we've got three channels of RGB. Let's now have a look at this photo and there you can see it. So let's do some slicing on this photo just to see how this works. So, so start, stop, step. The step is minus one so we're going backwards so we've reversed the rows in this image. What will this give us? Colon, comma, colon, colon, minus one. Let's have a look. Well we've got all of the rows uh, and we have reversed the columns so we've got a mirror image because the columns are in the reverse order. Uh, what else can we do? Well we can just take a section of this photo. If we take the rows from 50 to 150 and the columns from 150 to 280 which is from here to about here we should just cut out this tower. Uh, and if we do that and have a look, we can see that's exactly what we've done. NumPy though, NumPy, it's NumPy. You've got to learn NumPy. Just keep learning NumPy. I know it's taking longer, but it's NumPy. And if we were to take every other row and every other column, we've halved the size of the image. If you have a look now, this goes to about 300 where it was almost 600 on the x-axis and on the y-axis it goes up to just over 160 whereas before it was over 300. So we've taken every other row and every other column. So I hope that gives you some insight into slicing. Now I want to show you about applying mathematical functions to a NumPy array. We'll be there soon, I promise. I promise we'll be there soon. And you can do that by applying it to every element of the array by using these NumPy methods. So we have this photo here, we, we know what that is. If we wanted to take the sign of every element that made up the NumPy array of this photo, we could just do it like this and we've taken the sign of every single number. Now obviously it's not much use doing that to a photo but if that's your data and you needed to take a sign, the sign of every element in your data that's a very quick way of doing it. You don't have to worry about loops. Um, you can just broadcast the whole thing across the NumPy array. So that's really quick. And then there are loads of other things that you can do. So you can take the sum of the array or the product, the mean, the standard deviation, the variance, the minimum, uh, the maximum. You can get the argmin and the argmax. So let's just have a look at that. So the sum of all the elements in photo is this, the product of all the elements is zero, the mean value is this, not long to go now. And then you'll know NumPy and that, that'll be a great thing, all right? It will, I promise, I, I promise, I really do. The standard deviation is this, the variance is this figure here, the minimum value is zero, the maximum is 255, or we would expect that because this is an image. The argmin gives you the index value of the minimum, uh, which is that one, and the argmax gives you the index value of the maximum. So you can do some very quick statistics using NumPy arrays and, uh, and these methods in uh, NumPy. So now we're going to create another NumPy array. This is one, two, three, four, five. Should it be taking this long? Let's get back to it. And there are some interesting things you can do as well. Uh, you, can, you can test for where this is lower than three. 
uh, and you get an array that is true, true, false, false, false. And you can do the same with, let's say, greater than three, and you get the reverse. Here, you want the array where the array is greater than three, and you get four and five. So you can apply these masks to NumPy arrays, which can be really useful when you're handling data. You know, if you wanted to find all of the, if you had a data set of heights, for example, and you wanted to find all of the heights greater than a certain value, this would be very easy. You could do it in a line of code. And, you know, and again, it's much, much quicker than uh, using a, a loop in Python. So we're going to do something with this photo now to show you this in action. So MP where photo is greater than 100 we are going to replace it with 255 and where it isn't greater than 100 we're going to replace it with zero let's do that and let's have a look at what we get and we get this image here so we've taken a threshold of 100 and we've replaced everything that's over 100 with the value 255 and everything that's under 100 or 100 and under with zero more NumPy, that's what we need, more NumPy. The time's running down, but we need more NumPy. You know, and we could change that threshold if we wanted to. And if we look at the output now, you know, we get a different output. Other things that are useful to know about NumPy is now let's take these two arrays. We've got A array and B array. We can add those together. And if we do, we just get each element added together. Uh, to give us 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15. If we add 30 to this array, it will add 30 to each element. If we multiply these arrays, it will multiply each corresponding element together and give us a new array of those new elements. If we multiply one by 10, so if we multiply A array by 10, each element is multiplied by 10. Do we have enough NumPy yet? Are you NumPy'd out? Have you had enough of NumPy? No, let's get back to it. And then if we use this at symbol here, we get 130. And that gives us the dot product of these two arrays. So that's a nice way of getting the dot product. And I just wanted to show you one other thing as well, this dot T, which gives us the transpose of an array. So what that does is it interchanges rows and columns. And just to visualize that a bit better, you can see that if we apply it to this photo, that's what we get. So that is the transpose of an array. So in, in photo terms, it turns a landscape into a portrait. And, and that's what it does with data as well. And I find that a useful way to visualize this. And finally, you can sort an array again without having to use loops. You can use the inbuilt methods here. Uh, and if you do that, we take this array that's unsorted and we can sort it using mp.sort and then the array name. OK, I'm sorry. That wasn't five minutes. I know it was longer. But I think that's given you the basics of NumPy and you can go off and really practice with it. I hope that was useful. If it was, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it as far and wide as you possibly can, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.